no one cares about your health like you do and you have to be a very fierce advocate for yourself female health in our periods and our cycles they're really important and they are a sign of our health and vitality and the more i learned about it the more i'm like wow i can't believe i took a pill that was suppressing this for seven years and that really just like got me on to the journey of learning about hormones trying to figure out why i wasn't ovulating they did eventually run labs for me because i kept pressing my doctor being like i think there's something wrong because i was like a athlete i was competing in crossfit i was very young i'm like there's no reason i should be gaining weight and not having a cycle right now um they said it was because i was working out too much but I'm like the only thing that changed was the pill. So then finally they're like, okay, well you're, you have hypothyroidism because my TSH was very high. And it, they're like, they tested my hormones and my androgens, my male hormones were also high. So they assumed I had PCOS, but I'm like, how? I never had this before. So to them, they're like, go back on the pill. It'll, that will solve your problems and take a thyroid medication. And like, that was, that more was their pills. kind of fingers over the holes on the bucket. <laughs> yeah, I know just right. more, we'll just double up your pills. Um, and yeah. so, I mean, I didn't go on the pill. I tried to take thyroid meds, but I didn't tolerate them well. And now when I look back, it's because I didn't have the resources, right? I was speeding up my metabolism by increasing the amount of thyroid hormone in my body, but I definitely did not have the mineral resources to back that up. So I had like lots of hair loss when I tried to take the thyroid medication and anxiety and that sort of thing. Um, um, and I was like, I thought it was supposed to do the opposite. So that just kind of led me to shifting my focus from sports nutrition to women's health and trying to like be an advocate for myself. And then I was like, I want to help other women be an advocate for themselves too. Hey, Amanda, how you been? I've been good. You know, learning how to be a mom and work and find balance with all that. Oh, yeah. That's a life journey. That's a lifelong journey right there. I know. Many- I can. I have figure that out (laughs) how many kids do you have now i just have one you have one how old is she she's a girl right yeah she's 10 months oh wow you're a new mama (laughs) yeah so when we spoke last was was that super pregnant yeah you hadn't had her yet no i was like really close to my due date though i was like i would think i was like less than a month away yeah and you know like we did that live and and the lives just suck like to be honest like you know I it's know. like we we do them and we help hope that it helps the algorithm or whatever but in retrospect it's like okay we just spent an hour talking with someone they spent an hour with us talking with us like we need to like make sure that like, the information is like accessible to everybody and so again yeah. we just kind of wanted to like redo that with you because i just felt like our conversation was super valuable for everybody and i also enjoyed you in our conversation too so i was like down to like yeah so i was down to like just go that route again so anyways um we're just gonna we're just gonna go because it's already being recorded we're gonna edit out all the fluff um i'm gonna redo an intro after the talk so it's kind of like makes sense and then it kind of leads in and it's just kind of like this is all organic you know i mean The main things that I did want to cover and then we'll go into them. It's just kind of like you, your journey. You know, I love what you're doing with the minerals. Pretty much the same thing as last time, but we'll probably go a little bit deeper into subjects. But I really wanted to ask you specific questions on like, you know, what are the main minerals you see are deficient? What are the main things that like turn the needle for you? And then, um, you know, just basic stuff like that. I know that thyroid was was an issue for you in the past. It was an issue for me as well. I mean, when I did consults, I never saw somebody come in who wasn't either hyper or hypothyroid. Yeah. Yeah, I I never saw that, you know, it was always there. And like, for me, I would do these talks on um, the gut thyroid connection and just talk about like that kind of gut dysbiosis kind of angle and like how everyone's guts kind of just being super hammered with just shit really it's like glut from glyphosate to to rancid seed oils and a lot of that is just you know people wanting to go out to eat occasionally and not have to cook dinner it's it's and they get and then you get exposed to these things um to also people that aren't really on the health vibe journey right where they're like kind of like not truly aware of how bad things like roundup can be inside their body and maybe they don't think that small amounts are an issue especially if they're buying organic but a lot of these people 
you know, I guess really wouldn't even fit into that category. They're kind of like just buy whatever, you know, they're more like Trader Joe shoppers or Sprout shoppers and they just kind of buy whatever. Um, and a lot of us, they're just not aware of how bad it really is. And it's kind of one of those things where it's like, oh man, you gain access to this information and awareness as to like what's really going on. And I always tell, say to myself, and I try to tell other people around me, friends and family, you know, with great power comes great responsibility. So if you access this knowledge, um, or knowledge is power or whatever, then a lot of times what can happen is it can psychologically fuck you up because now you live in this kind of doomsday kind of mentality. And I see it so much. I see it with like people, even some people around me that are constantly posting memes about how bad it is or the banking system is going to collapse or this is going to happen. And it's all this kind of yeah. super negative. And I like, to me, that's exactly what that energy wants. Like that energy wants you yeah. constantly fixated on itself and misery loves company. So as long as you're posting these things, and, you know, look, I know we need to create an awareness, but I just feel like we're in a day and age now where we need to be creating solutions and we need to actually do things that create change versus just constantly sit behind, sit on a soapbox, you know, just blah, 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 and like regurgitate things through memes and things like this. It's so unhealthy. And I feel like it's pushing people in a direction that is only going to make things worse for themselves because as we know, we're all part of the one, right? We're all interconnected and, and we're all collectively, you know, tied to, tied to each other as like one human race. Um, so it seems like what could one person do, but our individual reality is, is everything. And through that individual realization, that individual self journey of being able to be a true sovereign, like, and what that means, be a true steward, and and do things like what you're doing and do things like what we do at crucial four then you know you're never going to see any change anywhere because it's like these other people that are on the fence they need something to wake them up and i don't necessarily think that it's us bitching about it that wakes people up maybe to some degree yeah i think what it is it's it's not seen it's something that's not seen it's this inner journey that creates a ripple through vibration that we can't physically physiologically see and you know science hasn't been able to measure it yet i mean i guess some of that stuff actually has been measured now that i think about it when i look at like dr joe dispenza's work and and uh what's the guy who did the epigenetics epigenetic guy um so yeah you know i just feel like it, it's our responsibility that once we have this knowledge that we don't let the knowledge bring us down and tear us down to where we're constantly kind of in this negative self vibration, I guess, if you will, like surrounding ourselves with the problem and not, and knowing that, you know, the solution might seem so far away, but understanding that there are solutions out there and, and things you can do it. And I say all this because I feel like what you're doing, it fits in line with this because like in your story that you talk about, it's the same story I have, same story I hear, you know, and that's probably why you've grown so well on Instagram is because so many people relate to your story. It's like you have a health concern and it's like basically like a bucket with a bunch of holes in it and you're putting your finger on these holes, which the finger could represent, like you say, like a, a thyroid herb or a thyroid medication or a specific symptom chasing solution. And you you come to the full picture where it's like hey what's the foundation to my physiology what's the foundation to what's going on within my body and this is the very thing that we have issues with in the brick and mortar institutions like with education they teach us all this stuff but the foundation of where it all comes from is is wrong Right. So it's like in allopathic medicine, it's symptom chasing, symptom addressing. But in the new re paradigm or the actual paradigm or the holistic paradigm or in your paradigm, it's, hey, minerals. Like, let's look at the foundation of our body and what it's made of. And I always think about the cell salts because the cell salts, if people don't know, there's 12 cell salts. And the way that they comprise of those salts is they actually 
burnt the body and through the ashes they found of the physical they found these 12 different salts and the correlation to that in the zodiac and the moon and the stars and like all this universal energy how it all kind of comes in and correlates it's it's a beautiful thing because once you kind of start to go down that path and understand that it becomes way simpler right it's like go get your hair analysis right that's what you're you, you're doing you're like get your minerals mm -hmm. checked out like see where your minerals are first and it's not that these thyroid herbs don't help it's not that these things like cold exposure don't help because i know for a fact cold exposure for example has has helped my thyroid tremendously because i was always one to like i'm i'm cold like even when it's not that cold and i know that's my thyroid like it's the thermostat i look at the thyroid as like a thermostat mm -hmm. so it's like if i'm not able to adapt to a certain environment and i'm like cold and my mom was always like that i'm like dude that's hypothyroidism like right there like that's just like me but through cold exposure through mineralization then or let me start first mineralization then cold exposure then working with the herbs now I'm healthier and stronger and more fit and more resilient than I've ever been before. And I'm sure you can attest to that. So uh, I'm going to shut up. I would love for you to, to elaborate and kind of just start from the beginning. Tell your story to our audience uh, because I think it's so powerful and so relatable. And again, I want to thank you for being on today. Thanks for having me. I love the bucket analogy. I'm probably going to steal that with the holes in it and then using like, ha like, you know, using your finger that represents different things. I had yeah. many holes and many different fingers trying to cover those holes on my journey. Um, and I, I just, I really like how you specified that like for you, it's like you remineralize then cold therapy, then herbs. Cause I think people want to jump ahead and skip to like cold therapy and herbs. And I'm like, your body probably can't even handle cold therapy right now. Right. It will probably be too stressful. Um, cause you don't have the mineral resources to back it up. Uh, and that's kind of like where a lot of like my journey was and I, the, a lot of issues I see with clients and thyroid issues, like I had it, a lot of it was related to stress. And I was on the pill for many years, like most women. Um, I think it's like 70, at least 70% of women have been on the pill at some point in their lifetime. And uh, when I got off, I, I decided to come off because I was like making lots of changes, health, healthy lifestyle wise. And I was like, I'm still taking this prescription medication. Like this feels a little weird. Mm -hmm. And I didn't think anything of it. My doctor's like, you're good. Go for it. You can just stop taking it. And so I did. And then I didn't get my period for almost a year. Um, actually, it was I think it was probably just over like 13 months. And during that 13 months, I had gained a ton of weight. My acne got worse. You know, I'm going to the doctor and I'm like, when should I be concerned that I haven't gotten my period yet? Because I had never, I'd never had irregular cycles in my whole life, even before the pill. So to me, I was like, this feels like a huge red flag, but no one thought it was a big deal. You know, they basically yeah. said, if you don't want to get pregnant right now, it doesn't matter. <laughs> and I'm right. like, I think it does. But, um, and that was really what kicked me off into realizing that one, like no one cares about your health like you do. And you have to be a very fierce advocate for yourself. Um, and then also that female health in our periods and our cycles, they're really important and they are a sign of our health and vitality. And the more I learned about it, the more I'm like, wow, I can't believe I took a pill that was suppressing this for seven years. And that really just like got me on to the journey of learning about hormones, trying to figure out why I wasn't ovulating. They did eventually run labs for me because I kept pressing my doctor being like, I think there's something wrong. Because I was like an athlete. I was competing in CrossFit. I was very young. I'm like, there's no reason I should be gaining weight and not having a cycle right now. Um, they said it was because I was working out too much, but I like the only thing that changed was the pill. So then finally they're like, okay, well you're, you have hypothyroidism because my TSH was very high mm -hmm. and it, they're like, they tested my hormones and my androgens, my male hormones were also high. So they assumed I had PCOS, 
but I'm like, how? I never had this before. So to them, they're like, go back on the pill. It'll, that will solve your problems and take a thyroid medication. And like, that was, that was their kind of fingers over the holes on the bucket. (laughs) Yeah, I know. Just more, we'll just double up your pills. Um, and so, I mean, I didn't go on the pill. I tried to take thyroid meds, but I didn't tolerate them well. And now when I look back, it's because I didn't have the resources, right? I was speeding up my metabolism by increasing the amount of thyroid hormone in my body, but I definitely did not have the mineral resources to back that up. So I had like lots of hair loss when I tried to take thyroid medication and anxiety and that sort of thing. Um, and I was like, I thought it was supposed to do the opposite. So that just kind of led me to shifting my focus from sports nutrition to women's health and trying to like be an advocate for myself. And then I was like, I want to help other women be an advocate for themselves too. Cause they're just, I mean, this was like almost 13 years ago. So there wasn't information out there like there is now. Um, you know, Dr. Jolene Brighton has a book on how to come off the pill, you know? So, uh, there's a lot of information out there now. Yeah. It seems like, they see, see and they saw and they're still seeing so much of the same issues that they don't they're perplexed like they don't even know what to do i mean obviously the allopathic model doesn't work it fails miserably it's definitely yeah. great at i feel like like if you get into an injury or a car wreck i feel like we have the best emergency medical system in the world hands down like i wouldn't want to if I got into a catastrophe, I wouldn't want to be anywhere else. I've traveled all over the world. I want to be here. I want to be in America. Yeah. You know, the response time, like all that stuff. But when it comes to like autoimmunity, gut dysbiosis, any type of these like, I guess, lifestyle and health related con- Ill- illnesses or diseases, you know, or disharmony. I really like, rather just say disharmony in the body. I hate the word disease. It just has this weird vibration around it. Yeah, uh, scary. The, it's yeah, they, and that's what they want. I mean, I say that, you know, the way that the system I feel like is set up. I used to think it's like these people are all against us, you know. And it's again, with great power comes great responsibility. That knowledge is, is knowledge is power. So, but it's not. It's like a, a lot of these people that go to school, they want to be nurses or whatever. My sister was a nurse. They genuinely have good intentions like they want to help people and this is the way society or or current culture has said that's how you do this so we take these like healers really that are willing to sacrifice their time to help us to help other people through service the word deserve service they deserve so much they're given like just this information that is just wrong it's just not the best ever, you know? And so, yeah, it's like empathy, right? Like you got to have empathy for these people. Like they truly want to help, but they truly do not know, you know, um, ignorance is bliss almost, you know, in that regard. And so it's like, it's a tough, you know, but I think at the end of the day and where we're seeing a, a huge trajectory is a lot of people are waking up to wanting to be self-sufficient, self-reliant on their community. So they want to be less dependent upon the food system at the grocery store or toilet paper when the next pandemic happens. You know what I mean? Like, you know, they, people started to see that in COVID. Like if anything good came out of COVID, it definitely was probably that people started to understand like, oh shit, could hit the fan. You know, when they, when they see people like, and I'm not left or right wing. I'm not into that. I think it's all a big joke. I'm not a Biden supporter or a Trump supporter. I think they're they're. I think it's all the puppet show. Um, but when you hear like stuff like what Biden's talking about now with the banking system, you know, it's like this, <laughs> all the memes they do to make fun of you. You know, it, it's uh-huh. it's it's sad that it's funny, uh, but it's the same yeah. narrative that's always being told since the dawn of time. It, to me, it's like they try to act like this is a new narrative or something new. But in reality, like this is ancient. This has been happening forever. They just make it seem new because today is a new day in the year of our Lord 2023, right? So it's like, yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting how you can get kind of sucked into that. So, so what are some of the things that you immediately notice shift the needle for you? 
you you've elaborated on like kind of where you came from and your story and 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 we all already know where you're going to go with this but most people that are listening to this they probably won't so what are the things that you started to move the needle for you and then really set the stage for you to create what you've created and if people don't know this amanda has such a powerful system or knowledge that she's gained that instead of doing one-on-ones you've created this course where people can access this information that you've put together and they can literally do the work themselves with you as a guide you as a resource and i just think that's so powerful because when I did consults, it I the reason I don't do them anymore is because I would pour my heart and soul into someone and they their compliance. Like they wouldn't comply with half of what you tell them, right? So I think what you're doing is definitely on spot because it's like, look, I'm going to show you what to do. I'm going to make this cheaper for everybody. But you still have to do the work. You know what I'm saying? It's like yeah. it's like, you know, and and to me like that's the missing piece to almost everyone's health journey. You know, is that like they don't, they're not really willing to make those changes. And, you know, there, if there's a will, there's a way. We have to understand. We have to push ourselves. We have to understand that, like, all these things that can potentially create stress in our lives to some degree are super beneficial for us. Like, if we look at, like, waking up earlier than we used to or switching a food that may be causing our issues to something else like we have to understand that this is going to create internal stress mental stress on us but we also have to understand that that's extremely beneficial for us when it's done properly like you can always overdo it just like they kind of told you oh you're overworking out you know what i mean or whatever because that's just the main thing they see uh but in reality you know it's this toxic antibiotic known as the pill right? That's totally throwing off the gut, the gut biome and the mucosal lining and like all the things that yeah. nature I took wants. antibiotics for like two years too for my acne. So, yeah, well, so I, like, did I. I, t- I remember I taking antibiotics for my acne. Yeah. I went to a, a, yeah. a, a school and like, Oh my God, zits on my face. Like pop. It had nothing to do with the flipping pop tarts they were feeding us and like the bull crap, <laughs> you know, cafeteria food that we occasionally ate. I mean, you got to think back then organic really wasn't a thing and our parents didn't know. Yeah. And that's when we really got hit hard with stuff, including our parents, because now it's like we at least have an option to get something that's not sprayed with chemicals. And that's known as organic, yeah. which to, to me is still low grade. Like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I, that's why mm-hmm. I started crucial Four farms, you know, is because it was like, even mm-hmm. though it's organic. So anyways, I digress go back. Um, what are some of the things that move the needle needle for you so that we can start to get straight into some solutions for people so they can start to kind of like, you know, want to continue to listen and be like, Oh, I need to try that. There's some action items. Yeah. And really quick. I, so I, I do have my course. I do still work one-on-one with people. I have two nutritionists that work with me. And oh, so cool. we do see clients. I made the course because And you'll hear, you know, I did a lot of, I tried a lot of things on my healing journey, just like most people. I mean, most women that come to see me, they've already been to conventional doctors and usually at least one or two holistic practitioners as well before they get to me. And it's very expensive. And I was, I was only 20 when I started this whole journey. I was in college and I had no money. I had like less than no money because I was doing clinicals and you had to like drive all over the state and go to school full time. It was like a nightmare. I could barely work. And so I am very passionate. Like once I like really dialed things down and I found hair testing, one, it's very affordable, the test itself. Um, But then finally being able to put everything that I've learned into like a format in the course to help people interpret their own test. I was like, this is going to be for the people that can't afford to work one-on-one that still want answers and that are typically like fed up, like on their healing journey, Mm -hmm. which is where I was when I found hair testing. Like I had gotten really into functional medicine because I couldn't get any help from conventional doctors. Uh, I saw an acupuncturist and then a couple naturopaths, but even then, like it just, it wasn't, like getting me to like where I wanted to be. And I felt like I was still like just taking supplements and doing blood work and stuff. And I just couldn't figure out like why, you know, like I'm like, okay, but like why, like why is this imbalance here? And I remember I did hormone testing. I had 
every time I tested my hormones, I still had estrogen dominance. I'm like, how is this possible? I've been doing all these different things. I've did stool testing for my gut health and everything helped a little bit, right? Like I would see some relief. I saw some improvements. My period, I finally got my cycle back. And then like eventually my period started to get less and less painful. Um, my skin would get a little bit better, but I still was like, how am I putting, investing all this time and money and energy into my health? And I'm like not seeing the results I want. And then one of my colleagues was like, how, why don't you do hair mineral testing? Cause I had the copper IUD at the time. And he's like, I bet it's a copper issue. And I was like, oh, but then I'll have to figure out like what to do for birth control. Um, and cause I didn't have, I didn't find like BAM yet or fertility awareness method yet. And so then I did a hair test. It showed I had like really, really high calcium. I had a calcium shell, which is when calcium goes so high that it like calcifies on your cells right. and, um, really high copper. And so it was like your classic, like very slow metabolism profile. And I looked very hypothyroid on my hair test and I'm like, okay, like this lines up with my symptoms, my mood, because calcium shell is like a very emotional uh, type of like mineral pattern. And it just like really hit home for me. And it was nice to see all of the things I was feeling like on a test result. And I get that a lot from clients too, of like, you know, a lot of my blood work comes back normal, but I still don't feel good. And then they do a hair test and they're like, okay, everything's not like perfect and normal, you know? Um, and then from there, I was like, okay, how the heck do I fix this? And that's what really sparked me into like learning more about iodine, which was a huge game changer for me as far as like my thyroid health goes. But I think the biggest thing that hair testing taught me and what really helped me, it took me, I'm still, I feel like I'm still learning this is like how much sure. stress impacts your minerals yeah. and like that's where mineral loss happens in the first place from different stressors. And I think even though I was like doing all the things and I have so many clients that come to me, they're like, I'm doing all the things I've tried this, this, and this, it, a lot of it's like checking off a box, right? It, it's just like getting the thing done. Like I wasn't necessarily doing everything with intention. I was just like, okay, I've done this. This isn't fixing it. What's the next thing? And I just think that like stressful fight or flight state was not serving me. And eventually it led to me just like completely burning out. Yeah. But you did notice the iodine helped you. And I'm sure if your calcium yeah, was high. Yeah, iodine was a really big one. Yeah, and I'm sure if your calcium was high, you immediately started looking at magnesium because of the calcium-magnesium uh, mm -hmm. relationship in the body. And if people aren't aware of that, like most, like I'm in Texas, so all our groundwater comes from li it's like limestone. So I see high calcium, you know, we have to understand like if yeah. you shower, what is it? one liter per like 20, 30 minutes in a shower gets soaked into your body. So it's like a lot of us are doing the best we can with our water. A lot of people just do like the Berkeley filters and things like this, which it, I, I haven't researched it much, but from my standpoint, you know, I, and in the past I did lots of spring water, all that stuff has high calcium in it. And it's hard yeah. to get that calcium out. Like even like the best spring waters in the world. Now there's higher calcium than magnesium. But we have to understand that it wasn't always like that. There, it used to actually be higher magnesium to calcium ratios because we burn through magnesium so much quicker. And this is part of the stressors you're talking about. Like certain minerals have a burn rate comparative to others. And calcium doesn't necessarily have it. it it's more so magnesium. And then so when the magnesium gets burned out and the calcium gets high, it starts getting deposited in places it's not supposed to. Hence, around your cells instead of inside your bones or in your arteries. And I mean, the number yeah. one killer in America is heart disease. Our heart, our heart is an electromagnetic organ. And the earth has an electromagnetic pulse. The sun's putting electromagnetic energy out. And yet we all walk around with these electromagnetic devices. And I've even seen yeah. certain people like go like, do this shit and like keep it in there or put it in your pocket right next to your nuts. Like that's crazy. Yeah. And we have to understand, like, the screen I'm looking at right now, we are electromagnetic beings, and all of our electronics are in that same span of electromagnetism, because that's how the Earth works. That's how we work, right? So you did the, I'm sure you did magnesium. Sorry, I keep going on these rants here. So, I just so a caveat about the magnesium that I think is important to mention. Yes, um, please. So... 
I, I love magnesium, and I feel like that's one of the first supplements I ever started taking. I, it's so well known, right? I think, especially in this day and age, like everyone knows magnesium is important. Um, I was taking a lot, like I was probably taking close to like 900 to 1,000 milligrams of it because I was trying to get wow. close to like five times my body weight, right. which is like what's recommended if you have a deficiency. Um, but the issue is that my sodium was also very low. And uh, so like by the time I got to the stage and did hair testing, like my sodium and potassium were very depleted, which is super common because – uh, as those go down, sodium, and potassium, it, they're like our solvent minerals. So right. you're much more likely to have calcium and magnesium leave the cell. So, it, you know, unknown, I didn't know I was doing anything that was like impairing that, but when you supplement with magnesium, it actually lowers aldosterone, which is a hormone that increases sodium retention. So I was definitely not doing myself any favor. I couldn't, I felt like I couldn't handle stress, which is right. very common when you don't have a lot of sodium and potassium. And so, um, I was in, I was like, okay, I'm going to back off magnesium. I still took some cause when you use iodine, you need all the cofactors and magnesium right. is one of the cofactors. Right. Um, and I don't think that a magnesium deficiency necessarily drove my calcium so high. I think it was like just stress in general because mm -hmm. um, it was still really high even when I was taking all that magnesium. Um, but what it helped me do was increase my sodium and potassium because when you have low sodium, it's a stressor. Your right. body recognizes that and then it goes into the sympathetic fight or flight response and then you're further depleting your other minerals. So, um, that like really helped me. And I think honestly, taking less supplements is just so important, especially if you're someone that has like gotten to this point where you're like taking a ton of things and you're oh, like, I, know. I don't remember why I started that. <laughs> right. You know? no, I, I um, totally but that, that was helpful. Yeah, no, I totally feel that. Like we, we've never been a company to push supplements because I feel that very thing. It's like, I always saw my mom and my grandpa and like so many people around me. I worked in the supplement before I did crucial four. I was, I was going to school for biochem and stuff. So I worked in like a health food store and I was in the supplement thing. And so I just saw this like firsthand, like these people spend all this money popping these pills when all they needed is in your case and probably in all their cases, but obviously in my case, we need salt. We need more salt in our diet, right? Yeah. To help with the sodium potassium pump. That same correlation that you see with calcium and magnesium, it's the same thing with sodium and potassium. You know, there's this relationship mm -hmm. there. And I think that when we're, when, you know, in our youth, our parents are feeding us, they don't know anything. That's when this epidemic kind of happened where the food supply and the food chain just got completely disrupted with garbage. They were putting so much salt and shitty sodium and shitty, shitty salts in all of our foods and all these fast foods that salt got a bad rap. And then when we all started getting mm -hmm. healthy and we stopped eating all that crap, a lot of us didn't realize how much salt we still needed back into our diet because we thought sodium was bad because it was so high in all these other foods, but it was really just the wrong types of sodium and, and the wrong, wrong types of these types of situations. Cause even if we were taking a multivitamin, we we're getting these, minerals in these forms that aren't the best ever you know it's like i always complain about all these different forms of magnesium and i was just at expo west saw all these companies pumping magnesium out to everyone all these different forms oh i've got this special form of tritrate special form of blah 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 and i got into it with multiple people because i'm like look there's, oh, only God. Three, there's only three forms in nature there's magnesium bicarbonate which doesn't exist which goes to my point that i let on earlier and why the magnesium's low in the water the calcium's so high for whatever reason, some people mm -hmm. say acid rain is probably some something else that's caused it too. What's in food, like what we find in food, and then chloride. What's in salt? What's in the ocean, right? And if we look at our physical, mm -hmm. we're basically like this liquid ocean. You know, we have like we're like ocean water, basically. You know, it's like some people say we came from the sea, and I'm but like we came from the earth. You know, we're the dust of the earth, but part of that is the ocean. So, like when you get dehydrated. And you go to the hospital for a massive dehydration, then they put a needle in you and they put saline. That's purified ocean water, right? Inside your body to rehydrate yeah. you. So, you know, I just get on my soapbox with this because I get that people want to sell magnesium in a pill. And believe me, I wish there was like a pill out there to make it work. But I just feel like nature left alone is in perfect balance. And we just need to like sit back like the Taoists do and did and, and are doing and just observe, you know what I mean? Like what's happening in nature when it's left alone 
and it's in perfect balance. And then how can we bring that into our life? And that's why like salt has been such a big thing for us at Crucial Four, why we even developed another salt, obviously. Uh, but understanding that when you come off the sad diet, that you need still need sodium in your diet, you still need salt, but you definitely don't want, you know, salt with heavy metals or microplastics or like most salt that I've analyzed, it's high calcium, low magnesium. Or and then high Oh, interesting. Yeah, high mercury, high lead, high are you know, all the heavy metals are super high. So yeah, it's super interesting. It took me two years to find in minerals because it's like people don't understand the Icelandic is not a real true salt. They those salt pans are like made. We make the salt pans oh, okay. in a shack and we use filtration to filter out any microplastics before the salt water even gets into the pans. And then we use the geothermal energy of Iceland to evaporate the water off. No other salt in the world is done like that. Most salt runs through veins and then pops up in these salt pans on land, right? And so that's why the yeah. Icelandic is so hard to get. There's only like nine metric tons a year. and it's so different. I mean, it's 17,000 parts per million of magnesium. 17,000. Like the closest one I yeah, found to that is in minerals. Get. which is, <laughs> Yeah, which is like 6,000. But the only reason that's happening is because it's almost like a man-made way of procuring pure ocean water and just evaporating the water out of it. And, and now you're left with the product with zero microplastics and, you know, obviously industry low heavy metals, but no, an extreme. And yeah. I think that's the thing. People ask me a lot about salt and heavy metals and I'm like, well, where is it coming from? I'm like, heavy metals are in the crust of the earth. I mean, it's really hard to avoid all yeah. heavy metal exposure. Of course. Yeah. And people want to see that zero heavy metals. Minerals. Shit. Yeah. It doesn't exist. It doesn't yeah. exist. Yeah. 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 And like, it's like, it's in the crust of the earth, our body, and also like our bodies are designed to deal with heavy metals through yes. minerals. Like if, right. you, if you have good mineral status, like magnesium is so important for avoid, if you have a deficiency, then you're so much more likely to accumulate heavy metals like aluminum um, and arsenic and even mercury and like other like same thing, like, think minerals like selenium and zinc. Yeah. So, yeah. If, so the other thing I just want to say about this, about sodium, cause I, for me, I also like, I was definitely eating paleo around this time. Um, and I was like, I, it was very pro salt at, during this era. Um, and I know a lot of paleo people still like that. I'm not against salt, but I think that there isn't enough focus on potassium mm. because sodium and potassium do have to be very balanced. Like you right. mentioned that sodium potassium pump if we, if we have like too much salt, then we're going to excrete more, more potassium and potassium is so important for our blood sugar, thyroid function, so many things. Um, and for making it so that, you know, heart health, blood pressure, like potassium is huge. And then in the same fashion, like if you have, don't have enough sodium and you have a lot of potassium, then you could deplete your sodium levels. So like, it's just like calcium, magnesium, like you do want right. them to be in balance. But I think with sodium, it's just so easy to get enough. You know, if you're, if you're using salt with food, um, like I love adrenal cocktails. I put like a quarter teaspoon of sea salt in there. It's very easy. I find most people have to work much harder to try to prioritize potassium rich foods yeah. and balance out the ratio that way. But that is one thing that like when I was able to increase my sodium and potassium, which I think was through like obviously food, but also like your thyroid is really important because your thyroid hormone, it helps power that sodium potassium pump. And right. so for me, I think that I was not producing and utilizing adequate thyroid hormone. And so that was also keeping my sodium and potassium low. So when I started very cautiously using iodine. Even now I look back, I'm like, I was not taking that much, but I was so nervous because in college and dietetic school, they make you so afraid of iodine. They make right. it sound like you're going to die in, right. if you take iodine. Um, I was probably only taking like five milligrams, which sounds like a lot, but it's really not that much. And that's what helped broke down my, break down my calcium shell and 
may help me move the needle, but it also helped me raise my sodium and potassium because then I was able to utilize that thyroid hormone better, which you need for sodium potassium absorption as well. Um, yeah. So it was like a, for me, I think it was a combination of the simple things like focusing way more on food. Um, sometimes I feel like in the nutrition space, we can get away from that because you get so absorbed with like lab testing and different protocols. Yeah. Uh, but I think simplifying it, going back to the foods that you're eating and then stress. I mean, ultimately, I was living in a way where I was going to be burning through my minerals no matter what. And so, and I'm still, I feel like this will be, I just have the personality where like, I really enjoy working. I love learning. Um, now I have a daughter and it's like, I, I can't ever do anything normally. Like I have to do everything like to the extreme. So I feel like that with parenting as well. Um, and so for me, I'm always kind of pulling myself back because I'm, if, if I start to feel like dysregulated, like, or maybe like my mood's not as good. I'm like irritable a lot easier. If I get like super clumsy, I know like my nervous system is like very off. And that's, mm -hmm. for me, that's a huge part of my health journey, how I maintain my health. And cause I'm constantly talking and learning about minerals, you know? So it's like, I can't not think about stress cause that's just such a big component. Right. What are your favorite potassium rich foods? I, well, who doesn't love potatoes? Um, I love potatoes and I really like fruit. Um, my, I actually don't do amazing with my blood sugar balance with fruit. Sadly, I did, I used the CGM for a while postpartum and it was like one of the things that was making it hard for me to like sleep well at night. So I don't go crazy with fruit, but I love like mango. Um, and I would say like, I also really like red meat, like red meat and salmon are probably my two other favorite potassium sources. And then black beans, love black beans. And they're also That's a great awesome. source of potassium. That's badass. Yeah. I love dates. I'm a date guy. And and the thing I was oh, going to yeah. add. Who doesn't love dates? Right. Who doesn't love dates? I do like dates with walnuts, you know, and then I even found a date sugar. I'm looking at creating a hydration product and I definitely want to get the potassium up and I can Ooh. get potassium from uh, Salt Lake. They have like got a derivative of it from that there, but the heavy metals I'm not too happy with. And I know that like the Icelandic yeah. has a lot of potassium, stuff like that, but I've been looking at coconut sugar and i found a new coconut sugar that we're probably going to be a distributor for because i didn't realize this but like all sugar and this is kind of a, a divert here but just a little factoid for everyone all sugar out there is usually brown right like when you see sugar in the raw when you see like and it's not yeah. also known, before that's known as jaguar and it's all brown well why is it brown well it's brown because it's all burnt and you see coconut wa wa sugar it's always brown like why is it brown it's all burnt and I learned this this last mm -hmm. weekend and I found a guy who's like doing this super gentle, low temp dehydration on coconut water and creating coconut sugar. And it's literally like these oh. yellow, white, but not white, white, because it's not bleached. We have to understand that white sugar is bleached white. Like they bleach it yeah. white. And like, yeah. like for me, when it's like I do a London fog every now and then or, you know, whatever. Anytime I add a little bit of sugar to something, if I use conventional sugar, it's even like organic and whatever I in and, and I use the, the burnt stuff, even just going like sugar cane. I just had this adverse reaction to it. I start feeling kind of acidic if, if I'm working and I'm bending down and like my acids kind of start moving around. I start to feel like, like just acidity and like all the things that the people that, that hate sugar now are like, I'm like, Oh, this is why they hate sugar. But when I have, this stuff that I've been playing with, like I've had zero reactions to it like that at all. And it's like this very clean, very, it just has a totally different vibration to it when I consume it, you know? But anyways, I found date sugar too. And, um, and I was kind of playing with that a little bit as well. Cause, um, and yeah, so it's like, and then coconut water, you know, but, uh, Obviously, you can only yeah, have coconut so water is so high in potassium. <laughs> yeah, it's so high. So I'm looking at doing like a, a the salt with coconut water and maybe coconut sugar. There's like a I can do a coconut water, uh, freeze dried coconut water, or freeze dried or the coconut sugar is not freeze dried; it's just gentle dried. And I'm looking at like a freeze dried lemon because like all these hydration products mm -hmm. on the market, they all have like natural flavors in them, and then like the forms of magnesium they use, I don't like the forms of potassium. They're terrible they use, or 
I did like I so I this season for my podcast it's like mineral deep dive episodes so I did like calcium magnesium I did a sodium one yeah. and part of the bonus episode for that I looked at I think it was 14 different electrolyte powders yeah. to yeah. see like the breakdown and what's in them oh my gosh like they all have some sort of like stevia monk fruit or like artificial sweetener right. and then um Natural a lot flavors. of them are just like the b yeah, a ton of B vitamins that are like in the least absorbable forms right. possible. Uh, I was just like, man, and some of these products were really expensive. And then I also put like the sodium potassium ratio because I was just like curious. Um, it so it was it was very interesting, but I was like, there's like really not many great electro. There's pretty much none, no great electrolyte. There's not, there. and the, but the thing is, there's this massive market for it. I see so many people yeah. buying it because they know they need better hydration. And a lot of it is because they have crappy access to water. The water they have is crap, you know? So they're trying to like add that because that's in nature with left alone, the water would have high magnesium. It'd have those right ratios mm -hmm. that we really need in there. We don't have that. So people are trying to like make recreate that, you know? And so when I get some of these formulas out, I want to send them to you because I want you to like look at Please it. Maybe do. you can even, yeah, maybe you can even help me like, we can figure out kind of some ratios. I can give you the numbers on like how much potassium's in this or that. And you know, like even yeah. the stuff I make now, it doesn't taste like I gave some to my son last night. We were at class, we're at Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and he's like drinking it and he's used to the one that we, that we sometimes get. And I'm like, bro, like the only reason I bought that stuff, well, actually my wife buys that stuff. That's why we got it. Um, I would never have gotten that stuff, not to talk down on it, but or her buying choices or whatever, because I, I don't care at the end of the day. But bottom line is not only everything you just mentioned, but like they put so much natural flavors with the stevia. It creates this thing where you think it's fucking Kool-Aid. And it's like, dude, no, it's not really yeah. supposed to taste like that. Like <laughs> it's actually supposed <laughs> to be a little bit more saltier. You know what I mean? Um, and so he was, but anyways, he was drinking it last night and he was like, I got to get used to this, dad. I'm like, okay, I'm working on the formula. You know oh, what I'm saying? Oh, so cute. But How old is he? He's 10. But but he was like, I feel great. Like, he was just like going around doing this. He's like 10. He's starting to like, oh. like you know, uh, be a little macho man kind of. And, uh, and the jujitsu really helps him with that. And it helps him like frag yeah. out some of that energy. But yeah, he I could just tell. Like, and he was even telling me, you know, because I, I see it with a lot of these kids. They have these bags under their eyes and shit, and their kidneys are just shot from just like mm -hmm. lack of water, lack of good mineral ratio, you know. And uh, and sure enough, like I'm just seeing him and like kind of observing this and noticing these things, you know, and like how we can make something, you know, for the people. But yeah, yeah, I have to send you some formulas, you know, because. I don't, I don't want to use yeah. natural flavors. I don't want to use any flow agents. I don't want to put them in little tear sachets that are super destructive to the planet. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, uh, and, but the trouble is, is creating something that tastes like what people would want to buy. You know what I mean? Like in reality. There, so there is like, yeah, there's like one good powder. It, I wouldn't call it an electrolyte powder because it's mostly potassium, but like bumble root. Have you heard of that one? Yeah, I have. So it's, it's like coconut water powder based. And then there's right. a little bit, a teeny bit of sodium, a teeny bit of magnesium, but I mean, it's, it's basically like 800 milligrams of potassium from the right. coconut water. So it's great if someone needs to increase potassium. I usually have people add a pinch of sea salt to that so that it's right. like more of like a four to one ratio, right. which is like technically ideal for potassium to sodium right. but i think they do add stevia um which yeah. is i'm like i would i'd rather just have one with regular sugar honestly i don't love the stevia like yeah. aftertaste it like really throws my taste buds off yeah everyone's um, different I, with stevia like yeah, yeah it's, i had it in, in breakfast for years and um a lot of people didn't like it so i'm like all right let's take it out and i didn't think anyone was gonna like in breakfast after that but our sales have actually went up, you know, within breakfast because it's more of a like an authentic herbal like, wow, everyone's like, wow. I mean, we've had a few people like, can you add the stevia back? Like, and I'm like, no, 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 we can't do add that. Add it like, yourself. <laughs> no. Yeah, yeah, right. You need to have those bitter, bitter herbs on your palate. You need to add. 
those activate certain organ pathways, you know, and start to actually get your health or food decisions. Like that's a, that's a huge conversation right there. Like our palates, when we don't have those five flavors on them and we're just getting salt and sweet, right. And we're not getting sour, astringent and bitter, then our food choices change. Once we can balance those out, like we start craving things that are actually better for us. But if we only contour to these two sweet and salty, then that's all we're ever going to want because that's all our fit, our biology knows that's there. And each week we're mainly bacteria, right? And there's groups of bacteria that thrive off the sugar and the sweet. But if we only feed them and that's all that grow, then what happens after that? You have an overgrowth of yeast and you have an overgrowth of all these yeah. things and you're pro- producing all this flipping mucus and, and phlegm and your your biofilms are all off, you know? So it's like we need those five other five flavors. And so, but I'm with you on the sugar just to go back to that. Like if I make this, I wanted to put like this coconut sugar in it because for one, it's like I've never even seen coconut sugar like this before ever. And yeah. the coconut the coconut water powder I'm still working on because I'm most of them have maltodextrin in them and they don't tell you that. And, and so that that's something that I don't like and something that I've been kind of working on and why I'm almost like pushed to just do the coat, this low temp coconut sugar, but I've got to get it tested for the potassium content. See if it's even in there. Cause it might not be. Yeah. I'd, I'd be very curious. Yeah. I don't, I, I'm not and sure. If you ever I'm, need help. Um, so one of my best friends is actually a food scientist. So that's why I know like way too much about all the powders and stuff. Yeah. I've thought about making like my own product eventually. Um, not for like electrolyte powder, but like just like something like a food product. Mm-hmm. But she was like, yeah, the coconut water powder is like pretty impossible. Cause we were talking about different ways to get more minerals in her products. She makes products for kids. Um, she's got like smash cakes and stuff that she makes out of like fruit and everything. Yeah. Uh, like dehydrated fruit. And she was saying how, um, Ubi's go follow her on Instagram. She's amazing. But, uh, she was saying how it's coconut water powder is very difficult because it's always going to have some sort of maltodextrin in it because of the way that it's processed yeah it's a spray there i was working with some guys that are looking at some alternatives to spray it on something else and i was like why don't you spray it on coconut sugar like do the coconut Mm -hmm. sugar and then spray the the freeze-dried or the liquid coconut water onto the sugar so that that's kind of the binding agent you know but Mm -hmm. a lot of these things require they want you to like they want me to like you know, send them hundreds of thousands of dollars to secure that development of that product. And then once yeah. that raw material comes out, now I'm responsible for that. And we're actually looking at doing that. You know, I put a lot of money in the farm and everything I'm doing there. But as I kind of look back at some of this stuff, I'm like, maybe we should just, you know, become distributors for some of these raw materials. And, you know, for because a lot of these things aren't in the US. Like I found a ton of stuff that's like in Korea, that's in Thailand, that's in Mexico. And they don't have American market for it yet, but their products are phenomenal. Oh. Like I found a Cibatruic, and I'm probably butchering that probiotic, but it's basically a probiotic from infants, fecal matter, right? That they've actually taken to a lab. And I was taking this stuff on the weekend. And like, we were all like, after we woke up in the morning and used the restroom, we all looked at each other like, the Loch Ness Monster come out of your body or is it just me? <laughs> and they're all like, yeah, like that stuff is like legit, okay. you know? And there's like these Korean guys and like we went back up to their booth and we we're like talking to them and stuff. And like they barely spoke English and like it was so hard to have that conversation. So I had to get a translator yeah. in there because I'm like this. I'm like, blah, 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 blah. And they're like, uh, I know. Hello. Bye bye. And, and like, yeah, you know, basic know conversation. <laughs> yeah. So it's like and I'm kind of used to that. I've dealt with that stuff in the past, especially sourcing herbs and stuff. But but yeah, mm-hmm. so it's it's a interesting time we live in because we have access to pretty much anything and everything we could ever want and knowledge is the information of the day so much of it so much information that it can be overwhelming but with that comes a massive potential i just see potential i just see opportunity yeah you know what I mean? is what i see even when the banking collapse there's going to be opportunity you know, uh, so it's just like, I don't know, I guess it's all in your mentality and how you look at things, but, but anyways, okay. I think so most people take in like, oh, go ahead. 
No, I'm done. Say what you're going to say. I was just going to say, I think most people take in like way too much health information. Yeah. And like, that's like a part of the problem for a lot of people. And then they just don't know what to do. Um, Or there's even, there's even a good amount of research around like decision-making and like the more options that you have, the, the less likely you'll execute anything that you make. Yes. Yeah. No, the less satisfied that people are with the decision that they made because they're like thinking about so many other possible oh. options. What? Yeah. So I, I thought that was super interesting. Um, cause I think about a lot of this stuff cause we work with one-on-one with clients and I, I would say now more than ever, the people that are coming to us have done like all the lab testing. I mean, literally everything they're even, they're testing for mold. They're testing for everything. They've done GI maps, touch tests. A lot of them have done hair tests, um, mold testing, like for mycotoxins and they're still can't get to the root of their issues. But a lot of it is that they're like constantly switching from protocol to protocol and they're skipping the foundations, right? Like, like, okay, let's just like track your food, (laughs) you know, like how much are you eating? And like, let's look at, is your blood sugar actually balanced? You know, is this something that's actually (laughs) working for you? Cause I, we underestimate those little things and how much they're going to impact our stress hormones. And for women, that is really what's going to have the biggest impact on like our sex hormones. Right. Absolutely. I wanted to ask you, um, I kind of went, went, oh, have you ever heard of the cell salts, the 12 cell salts? Have you ever taken those, the bioplasma? I have heard, I have heard of them when I first got into hair testing. I went through a program that they taught, that's like the first time I ever heard uh, of that's them. That's why I brought, that's why I'm I, asking, because I'm like, when I did my hair yeah. analysis and did all that, it was like, that's what kind of got me on cell salts. And then this book, I wanted to show you if you're interested in it, this yeah, book changed me. my life. And so I'll have to send I you the really link. I can't see it because your screen is blurry. Oh, my screen's all jagged. Yeah, send me the so link. So it's called it. The Zodiac yeah. and the Salts of Salvation. And it basically goes into the whole idea of that when they burnt our body, they found these 12 different cell salts. Um, yeah. Which, and I just remember learning about all the things that they're like different imbalances and stuff that they're good for. Right. And so based on your, you can use the, your, like based on where all the planets were, not just where your sun sign is or whatever. Actually, mm-hmm. where, particularly where Saturn is, where Saturn was when you were born, um, you know, we have all the way that they do the zodiac through the physiology is that you're not one sign. You're actually all 12 because you are, you know, part of that universal makeup. And this is what people need to understand, like the true alchemy of understanding astrology and astronomy isn't to be restricted to uh, your sun sign where the sun was when you were born that that has nothing to do with with like so much in the in the physiology but where saturn is saturn is known as um you know it's the outside planet some people say oh it's satan or this you know and like this whole idea with the sabbath and you know people go to church on saturday there's all these entendres that really confuse people but at the end of the day where saturn is is typically an area that's going to pull a, a lot out of you. So you're naturally going to have um, more tendencies to be deficient in that specific mineral based on where Saturn was when, when you were born. So it's kind of interesting. interesting. But yeah. So it's like, um, like for me, uh, mine's calcium uh, fluoride, which I was like, what, mm. you know what I mean? But that's where Saturn was. Um, which was in, which is in like this area, my reproductive organ area, right? Mm-hmm. That's where Saturn was. And so that's typically how you kind of can start with the cell salts is like, you can kind of look at the areas in your physiology where you might be deficient in an area. Just look where Saturn is on your chart. And then you'll know, uh, my son's is his ankles. And like for years, he's always like, Oh, my ankles are sore. My ankles are sore. So I got like the cell salt for his for that area. And it really, it did help him. But at the end of the day, you can just take all 12, you know, if you want to, because it's a homeopathic. So it's not like you have to worry about having too much. And I think that that's something that's very valuable and and can be super impactful for people because, you know, people tend to overdo things or underdo things. And it's like Mm -hmm. finding that right dosage. And that's tough, right? Now you obviously need to go get a baseline and you probably need, when do you suggest people check their hair Miller analysis? Like every six months, every three months, every year, you know? 
I think it depends on like, like if I have someone that's actively making changes, I mean, I always have people make changes really slowly. Cause like you said, like compliance is very difficult. And I think most of the time that's because we're giving people way too many things to do. <laughs> and it's yeah. like, how are they ever supposed to build any momentum if they can't like slowly start chipping away and like building their confidence. Um, so I typically have people make changes really slowly. And if they have a lot of health concerns, like uh, say for example, they do a hair test and we see that there is really high calcium and maybe we want to eventually use iodine. Then I would probably have them retest in like three, four months because we want to see if what we're doing is working and working. if it's still appropriate for them. If someone is a fast four and has very depleted minerals, which I see all the time, um, I usually say give it six months of making changes because most likely you and make sure you're working on your stress and actually addressing like how you're living because yeah. if you're not you're probably not going to see a change when you retest and then you'll be discouraged um but typically it's between that like four to six month mark and then if someone's doing maintenance like i have lots of clients that i've worked with in the past that they'll just order a hair test like once a year to check in um i think that's like appropriate for that population too nice yeah i, I love that advice i think that's a great suggestion and you know, it's like, give if you're extreme, give your body some time, you know, but if you're not, do it every three months to kind of just see kind of like where you are. That was kind of how I did it at first, you know, and just seeing kind of like where I am and making sure I'm going in that right direction. And then I kind of lay off of it, to be honest, I haven't done one in years. I just, I'm very... I've gotten to this place to where it's like, and it, maybe it's because I do feel so good. And, but and initially I did do lots of testing and I did do all that. And then I've kind of gotten away from it. I'm even bad with like formulation sometimes too. Like even with recipes in the kitchen, like a lot of times I'll make something and someone will ask me like, well, do you got the recipe for that? And I'm like, no, oh, man, like I just intuitively. That's like my least favorite question online. Right. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's, it's very, like I get where it comes from, but for me, it's like, the stress of that mentality was what yeah. stressed me out. Like always counting and being a hypochondriac about shit and, and psycho fanatic yeah. about what I'm doing. It, it made me so detached from the thing that God gave me, which was my innate ability for discernment. You know what I mean? My innate ability to connect yeah. to jaw and ask, you know what I need and to, and then to listen with my two ears, right. And, and my two eyes and learn to shut my one mouth, right. And breathe through my yeah. two nostrils. Right. So this idea of our awareness is, is twofold through our like, you know, la, 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 you know, and I'd say that to me because I talk like too much. Right. So it's beneficial for me to, <laughs> to, to say these things. Uh, but that's like, for me, it's like where I really felt like I moved the needle the most because now I feel like I, I have this innate ability to, to know if I need to have a little bit more magnesium or a little bit more potassium without having to be so left brain mm -hmm. analytical about it. Like there's something about when you get healthy enough that your ability to be able to tell when you're off you know how to get yourself back into that kind of like balanced state. Um, and even like with yeah. certain foods, you know, it's like I, I was really against fasting for a long time, but I did so much in the past and uh, my stress, like you keep bringing up stress. So it's like, dude, I wasn't healthy mm -hmm. enough to fast. You know, I, yeah. I was, I wasn't right. I didn't have enough reserves to fast. You know, it's like, I'm taking a depleted body that's deficient and I'm stripping it farther and farther down. And that's just not beneficial, you know, to your nervous system, mm -hmm. your hormones, like, you know, like you said, like being clumsy, or just noticing you're off noticing like, oh, you go here, and then you're like, Oh, what, what the hell? Like, what's going on? And uh, irritable thing always getting on your nerves, you know what I mean? And let alone, we're constantly being hit with all this artificial and magnet magnetic fields, you know, that are you know, that's not beneficial either, but that's why when I get off here with you, one I'm thing I want to say about testing. Yes. Yes. Um, say. So I, the other thing with testing and one, and I totally relate, I think like once you become an expert on your body, which is my goal for everyone I work with and hopefully everyone that's in my course is 
that you don't really need to test as often, right? You start to learn how to take the cues from your body. But I think so many of us on our healing journey, we are, we are not practicing embodiment. We're disconnected from our bodies for many different reasons. And we're always looking to an outside source to tell us like what to do, um, which I understand. I mean, I was there for a very long time too. Right. But if a lab test is not going to change what you're currently doing, like if you're not even eating enough or you you know that you could definitely make changes with food that you maybe you haven't felt ready to make, I would say don't do the testing. <laughs> like, right. you know, like if it's not, if the lab test isn't going to change what you're doing, yeah, it, yeah. yeah you, you don't really need to do it. For myself, uh, like I hadn't done testing. I'd only been doing it maybe like once a year. And then postpartum, I'm like, okay, I'm actually, I'm doing a lot more frequent of like lab testing to see like where I'm at with different things and to like support different like imbalances in my body. But I'm, it's interesting. So I'm like, yeah, I haven't done this in like a while, you know, cause it, yeah. because it wasn't going to change what I was currently doing, but now it's like, especially with breastfeeding and stuff, it's, you know, there's so many different factors that are depleting me. So it's been helpful for making sure like I'm on top of different things there. But if someone doesn't think it's going to change what they're currently doing, I'm like, you probably shouldn't do the testing. Yeah. And it, yeah, it's like compliancy and, you know, it's one thing to know what's wrong. It's another thing to implement, you know, and, but typically what we have to understand, it's something that you don't want to let go of that's going to actually get you into a better situation. And you just have to face that and understand that it's going to be challenging. If we think that we can go get a test and take a couple pills or supplements or minerals or even foods and everything's going to get fixed. We have to understand that we're spiritual beings living in a physical body. We're not physical beings living in the spiritual realm. So there's a lot going on that we might not left brain be able to analyze that we have to understand. Like maybe there's, you know, you could go into your past, we could go into our past traumas. Like so many of us have traumas, yeah. birth trauma, if you were born in a hospital and your mom took an epidural and you did the whole medical way of birth, you have birth trauma. Like, I'm sorry. Like, I know I had birth trauma. Like I talked to my mom. She's like, yeah, the birth wasn't too bad, blah, blah. But the way that that's done, like my children were born in the water. Like my wife was on her knees in the water and like that, that type. And that still could be traumatic for an infant. Like I was going to say women that birth at home can have birth trauma too. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because if they're not doing the breathing right, or if the, the doula is not doing things right or this or that, but at the end of the day, you know, there's all these things that we, that we don't see that we can't measure that we have to take into consideration. And I feel like those are the things that block people from compliancy more than anything else. Because like, what is the thing that keeps people from complying? Like, obviously they got these tests. They know what they need to do. They've had Amanda tell you, hey, Amanda's telling you, this is what you need to do. But why do people, some people, not all people, why do some people still not go that route? You know, and I feel like there's this underlying yeah. thing that they might want to look at. And, and I think that through that awareness, through that consciousness, that veil gets lifted. And all of a sudden you're like, oh, it's because maybe this happened to me. And just through that acknowledgement that I see people like now they can actually make those changes. You know, it doesn't have to be therapy. They don't so, have to go yeah. do psychedelics or any of that shit. Like they can just like yeah. be aware of what's going on. Like awareness is key. Like consciousness is key. It, it's king and queen. It's It's omnipresent. And so it's like once you're aware of things – then you your will seems to basically upregulate or level up and your ability to move through the obstacles, you know, it's like, because it's like a lot of times I feel like people think that, oh, it's just going to be so easy and everything's just going to get better, but they don't really truly have a fully understanding of what happened to them or what's going on with them. But once they do have that full understanding and they understand like, man, yeah, I'm going to have to work on this. Like, this is just part of kind of like my nature. And I've had some things maybe happen to me in the past and I've had these mineral imbalances and they've kind of, you know, ha they're physiologically ha making me respond in these ways to a degree because we always have our will, you know, but 
once we have that full encompassing understanding, I think now we can actually tackle these goals and, and actually execute them and, and start checking boxes and get results. Right. So. Yeah. So I have like such a different perspective on that. No, um, let's it. Just like compliance in general. So yeah. I, I feel like I have a, a lot of the women I work with are like the ones that are doing everything to a T, mm -hmm. lots of type A women. And it's almost too good, right? They're doing too much. They're doing it without much intention. And they're doing it to like check off boxes off of a list, very much like how I was on my healing journey. And I think that the issue is that it's it's because in a lot of times like they're avoiding, they don't even know that they're avoiding something deeper, like you're saying. So, and then, but they come to a point where when they're finally, I think a lot of people cannot deal with their past trauma or even just like really getting to know themselves and learning more about themselves because they don't have the energy for it <laughs> because you know, they're depleted. They're like, their nervous system can't handle it. They're not in like a space where they can even fathom like touching that. And so many women that I work with get to that place on the journey where they stuff does start to come up, right? Like, especially when you start eating enough and slowly worrying of shifting your mindset and your priorities, I feel like then all of a sudden you're like, oh, I actually have like energy and resources to focus on this thing that I've been ignoring from my past for 20 years. Yeah. Um, and so I think on the healing journey, you can like have a lot of that stuff come up when you don't deal with it and address your nervous system regulation. I think that's when people hit a wall and a lot of frustration can come up. Um, especially with like hormones and like fertility and stuff. And then I think it's like, you know, when you do go down that route, it's, it's, it's like a whole new way of like learning yourself and who you are and how to regulate and understand like your nervous system. Cause I feel like a lot of the stuff you were saying before, how like you don't always necessarily like need to like lab test and stuff. It is about knowing like, when are you balanced? Like when is that yeah. nervous system in regulation and when is it a little dysregulated and what can help right. bring you back into that regulation? Yeah. And you know, for yourself, like the foods and stuff that do that. Yeah. And, and just to add to that, you know, I, I had to do the testing first, you know what I mean? Like I, yeah. I, yeah. and so there's no way around that, especially in this day and age, like you need both sides of the hemisphere working together, not just one, right? So it's yeah. like you can't be too savant, clairvoyant about things, but you also, you know, can't be too analytical and left brain and like test, test, test about things and type A type about things, you know? Yeah. It's, it's, it's a, a balance. beautiful balance that can be hard to achieve. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's <laughs> I have not... to go in like 15 minutes just so you know, because I have to put my daughter down. Um, yeah. I let's just hear let's... her like yelling. So, oh, I'm <laughs> so sorry. Yeah. Dying. Well, look, we're up. On it's the okay. Hour. So yeah, and yeah. good for you being a new mom. I'm proud of you and I'm glad that you are raising a superhuman over there and uh just Oh my gosh. You. She's so. huge too. I like good. can't believe how like big she is. It's like ridiculous. Yeah. yeah. But but yeah, so is there is there anything else you want to leave anyone with? Like let's get it give I'm supposed to ask you a question, but no big deal. I was gonna ask We can well, go me... we can like quickly go through those if you want. Yeah, like I'll just ask you one. Like, what's your favorite uh, Crucial Four product? Oh, can I do two? That's fine. Okay, so I mean, obviously the sea salt. I feel like that's everyone's favorite product. Um, but I really like the colostrum, and it's hard to find a good quality colostrum. Mm -hmm. So that is one that is definitely like. I feel like those two are a tie. Cool. Yeah, and I'm actually creating a postpartum blend right now with the colostrum and Ooh. I found a two, uh, regenerative whey concentrate. Mm -hmm. So I actually couldn't find it anywhere. It doesn't exist, but I found some cheese makers and they're actually, I'm going to buy their whey from them and then I'm going to process it. And we're going to have a regenerative a two whey. I'm looking to add that to the colostrum for this Ooh. postpartum blend, uh, with a little bit of collagen, but not a lot and a little bit of sea salt. I thought about yeah. pearl and things like that, but that's cool because uh and i'm also doing a video today after this after i go i gotta go outside for a little bit and come back on our colostrum yeah a lot a lot of people understand like the testing that we have done and when how we harvest it in single origin it's undefatted undenatured all this cool stuff so that's awesome um and could you go ahead and one more time leave like your angle uh again i want to tell everyone if you haven't got a hair analysis mineral analysis done don't just think to go run and do one, 
Look at Amanda's course so she you know how to read the hieroglyphs <laughs> that you're gonna get from your test. Yeah. And uh and under help understand you and understand that like through all this conversation that her and I had, where I'm at today, where she's at today isn't where we started. We started with the testing, we started with information. And I just feel like starting with the foundation of mineralization and understanding that that foundation will set you up for success. You have to build a house on a solid foundation. And we are made of minerals. Like that's like the main thing that operates us and navigates every single physiological reaction in our body. So Amanda, could you please leave your, you know, anything you want to leave your handle, your website, email, however you want us to contact you. Yeah. So I'm at hormone healing RD on Instagram. You can, my website is hormone healing RD.com. If you're really enjoying learning about minerals and a few of like those highlights, definitely check out my podcast. It's called the RU you menstrual podcast. You can find it anywhere podcasts are played. And I have the video version on YouTube because this season's all mineral deep dives. I mean, it's very nerdy. I love it. I think it's really fun. Um, but if you're wanting to learn a little bit more, cause it's always, I feel like it's always nice to do that before you dive right into testing. Um, and we have a mineral quiz. If you're like, is this an issue for me? I'm not really sure. You can kind of get like a ranking whether of whether or not you should focus on minerals. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for having me. I always enjoy our conversations. Always, always. And um, yeah, thank you. So that's it. It's going to keep recording, but we're going to edit everything after the thank you. Um, okay. You're up uploaded. 